All right. Mmm, still chewing. You're still chewing. What you munching? Almonds and chocolate. Okay. You have a little bit of off-white chunky core in your kit and you can use this to make eyes and I just take a small piece and try to roll a little square or circle in my hands. That way it's nice and soft and you can kind of stab it, stab it into place. I'm just trying to tuck it right into that eye socket that we made. I think the um, the blue core is going to make a really nice eye color. So I can take a little fuzz of that. Always oh, creepy. <laughs> yeah, the I white eyes are know. always creepy. And then stab that into a little circle right in the center. Are you pretty zoomed? Is my head in the way? It, it's not in the way. It's in the shot, but it's uh. not in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I can get that much closer. Okay. If you scoot up two inches, and I can zoom, and you won't be in it, maybe. Let's try I know, that. but if I scoot him up, then I have to move. <laughs> try, try that. I have to move my head. Oh up yeah, you're still in too. it. Too. All right, he's looking a little deranged at the moment. Let's get a teeny tiny black dot in the center of the eye. Don't laugh at my gnome. All right, what other gnomes do I have? He looks like he knows a secret. Lately. Yeah, you gnome stuff. I gnome stuff. Um, hmm. You're gonna try to think and sculpt a face? No, not really. <laughs> While you're kind of getting hungry, that's superhuman. Oh my gosh, my stomach. Okay. Oh, oh, he just got very thoughtful for a moment <sighs> when you put. <laughs> huh? Does he need a lower lid is the question. I think so. I think he needs a tiny lower lid. And I might just fold it in my hand rather than I don't want to lose my cheek color. I'm going to lose my cheek color. <laughs> Look at pictures, for sure, of gnomes, of bearded men. That could be a fun Google search. Yeah. It's going to help you. It's going to help you make all your tiny little stabbing decisions. Because I can't, as much as I try, explain every stab or thought. Like I was just thinking the lower lid needs to be shorter than the upper lid. I don't want the lower lid coming out past 
See, this is going to get weird because I totally can't see this side. We can see it, and that's really what matters. <laughs> right, right. Not you knowing what you're doing. Uh, Don't stab your finger. Okay, it's time for beards. It, that's good. Yeah? All right, I'm going to set this floof aside for the moment and bring out my curls. You're going to have some type of white lock that is about three to four inches long. These are um, Cotswold. I think that's mainly what we're trying to use in the kits. And the, when you're working with locks, you want to select a curl by finding a tip and then pulling it away from the rest of them. So you have a pretty the, end and a yep, and so you have a curly tippy end and a, the cut end that was next to the sheep. And if you do it that way, you keep the locks intact versus just, you know, turning it all in the fluff. So the first thing I do is I put a lock over the ear. So this is going to make the sideburn and start to sh the back part of the beard. And so I just stab it over the ear. Oh, it has a cur <laughs> curly little lock. Okay, then we're going to make a selection and felt the beard right under the cheek here. So I'm going to look for a couple of nice locks this time. That one's a little weird. That's a nice oh, batch. that's a nice batch. So I can just use this whole thing. So I want to put the cut end down. Like this. And the curly end up. I want to felt right under that cheekbone along the side of the face. And I want to take my off-white and make a little noodle with it. And then fold the locky end over and stab that down. And this should meet up with your initial um, sideburn piece. What's even worse than being hungry is that I don't have any food today. Oh, that's a nice one too. That one's so nice. I'm going to save that one for the beard because it's so nice. Not that I won't find another nice one. If you want a less, you know, totally curly look, you can brush this out a little bit. You could even flat iron it. Oh, let me be smart and pull my noodle before I get my hands all tied up here. Now for the beard, the center of the beard, I put two really like good ones on the two layers on the chin. One just usually doesn't look full enough. So I found that really nice set that I'm going to use for the top. And I find. All right, I'll put this one on first. And then I'll put that 
really nice one on top. Let me get two noodles ready. So what do you feed me for lunch, Milo? Um, we should go get food. I have two avocados. Some tomato. Some goldfish. <laughs> Ooh, we should go to Crave. Okay. Now I want to get this right, right up under that lip. First one I just put a little lower. This one I really want to just tuck under. So with the cheeky too, I can, that pink color, I can um, roll a little piece to make a pink, um, little pink lower lip. So I'm going to do that. I'm just rolling it in my hands. You could roll it around a toothpick if you need to. So for the mustache, I find two locks and I come one from each side. So I kind of like, this isn't quite so curly, this piece I just found, so I'm going to use this. Let's see if I can make it even here. And it's the same deal. Whoops, I need. Mm, I'm gonna look, keep looking a little bit. It's half the fun is finding the right lock. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe I'll use those and just trim them a little bit. I still want some little off-white for this center. Yeah, this is good. There's plenty of locks here, so there's a lot to choose from. What I'm looking for is two that are the same thickness and shape. So these are just slightly thicker than these, so that's what I'm going to use. And then I might trim it down a little bit. Just to the right of center? Just to the right of center. Thank you. Because I've got the cut end here, and I'm going to fold this end back over it. And I can kind of stab and manscape him. So I lost my off white. So my armature wire is right there, so I have to kind of feel it and work around it a little bit. Alright, now 
we need to do hair and it's all done the same way just on the back of the head we're going to find a few nice pieces put the cut end down kind of stretch these out a little bit so they're not quite so dense and locky yeah So when I made Little Red, I did her hair with Surrey, and I just put like a ton on long, and then I gave her a haircut. Like she went to the salon and got a haircut. So you can do that with this too. You can put it on, brush it out, um, you know, shape it the way you want it. They're known barber shops. In Gnome Land? Yeah. Um, who cuts their hair? The birds. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who cuts their hair. Some animal, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe they forge little scissors. <laughs> They're very, very crafty. They're super connected to nature. Very creative. not bogged down with technology like we are. This is true. Sometimes I think I would like to live that way. You wouldn't be able to teach anyone how to needle felt online. I know. <laughs> and that would be sad. Yeah. It is nice to unplug. <laughs> okay. This is good. Now you can really have fun with that olive. And you just make tiny little threads of it. And you can accentuate wrinkles. So you might go there, you might go here, you might go here. If I go here, it'll give it a little bit of a look of a eyelash and not quite so freaky. Give my nostril. All right, I'm gonna work on the right side off camera because I have to lean in so much. Yeah. All right, okay. so so to suspend them in midair. So I'm gonna make a tool that holds your thing so that you can give them a haircut. But I'm using our selfie stick. <laughs> um, but what I did is I took my little comb and just kind of brush this out so I could see what what falls where and then I want him to be a little bit more kind of shaped so I'm gonna go ahead and plus I just like giving haircuts this is really fun to me so I'm gonna go ahead and sculpt his beard a little bit and so he'll lose um, some of these curls and maybe that's not the look you want. Maybe you want that really kind of curly. Let's see, let's save this for later. I was gonna ask the back of the head, 
you only go part way up? Yes. The back of the head. I'll turn him around because I got to do his hair in the back too. And when I cut, I try to try to like kind of slide your scissors along so that you're not making everything really blunt. Um, like that's a little blunt right there, so you want to kind of razor it a little bit. So I leave them bald on top. I do. But these curls got a little out of control. There's like one on each side that's way crazier than the rest of it. I mean, a gnome's got to look good. Oh, yeah. They're very handsome little guys. Or once he has his, once I felt that down, that'll be better. All right, so we have hat, pants, belt, then we're good. He's cute. He looks very cute. Okay, hat, this is fun. This is good stuff. It's made the same way we did the tunic and the sleeves, except we need to make a triangle. So we're going to use, we have in our kit, red core and red top coat. This is poppy, this is um, Christmas red. And what you want to do is lay out a triangle. Now actually first thing we want to do is um, determine the the um, circumference of the head. So we're going to take a piece of core noodle. This will end up being inside of our hat taco. And we want to sit down on the eyes. Oh, about the tiny bit. Sorry. Sit down on the eyes, go right over the ears, come around the back of the head. Um, this is a little bit long. So this one's about five inches. He was looking a little bit like Willie Nelson there for a second. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. funny. Um, so he lost a little bit of his head. I would like to have a little bit more. I could make another piece um, out of a flesh tone, but um, I'm not gonna worry about it. But that is just an option for you if you feel like he doesn't have enough head for his hat to sit on. And sometimes I felt them on and sometimes I have them removable these guys I sort of stabbed on there. Um, okay. You would so, make, sorry, you would make a taco? How would you blend in um, on the head top of the Yeah, head? I would probably just fold a soft piece to make the shape that I need. And then if there was rolls that needed to be blended, just a little bit of fringe, fringe. on top. Yeah. So I'm shooting for triangle here. And it's going to take a little bit of layering. Oh, you know what we're going to do, actually? We want to, what I did with these guys is I actually made a triangle um, cone that's inside the hat. And that just helps you build the hat. Um, here, I'll just pull that off. So, wow. and actually, real gnome hats are made this way. They're solid felt. Um, they're not hollow inside. And then they just sit down on their little heads. So um, we're going to take a about a six inch piece of core and split it in half lengthwise. And then wrap. Um, we can use the tool, Zoli tool. A skewer would be better. Let me grab a skewer real quick. Because the skewer, it'll get nice and tight. Or the end of a um, paintbrush or whatever you have. So that's a little bit of a thicker skewer, not quite the... This is a thicker skewer. Shrimp skewer. Yeah, I got these 
Jumbo, they're called, Ooh. at the grocery store. I'm coming. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Okay. So I want to make like a two inch cone. So I'm going to wrap up to the tip and back. And I'm thinking cone, so I'm lingering at the bottom a little bit more than the top. And then I'm going to take that second piece and do the same thing. This doesn't have to be super pretty, as you can see. All right, good. So this will go inside the hat. So I'm going to stab that a little bit. All right, now, is that good? Is that okay? Thank you. Okay. And I also want to make a little bit of a curve at the base of the hat, because then when you fold it around, it'll fit the dude better. Then we take our poppy, and again, I just try to pull consistent thin pieces so that I don't get chunks or stripes or any weirdness. Okay. Just make sure it's even. Whatever you see is the way it's going to look. So. If there's a big bald spot, it's gonna be a big bald spot. So like right here, I, I just need a little bit more. And then we're gonna flip it over. Just wanna to start to get it holding together a little bit. Then we're gonna put our noodle in here. And remember to make that little smile curve. And if you stab that down, then when you fold this up, it should kind of follow that line. Now we can flip it back over and really go at it with the punch tool. And since I want the bottom to look like the brim of a hat, I want to flatten it out pretty well. Don't leave that, you know, big bump. Then we can, again, we want to tack this first. I can check, just kind of check the size. It's gonna change a little bit, but I'm on track here, so it's good. So when do you put the cone in last? Yeah. put this up in there. Then we can start to felt into the cone. Just gives you a little bit more help making that um, shape. I know sometimes when Lee makes these, I think she gets to this point and actually wet felts the hat. Mm -hmm. um, just with her hands and um, the soap and 
hot water. Once it's tacked together? Yeah, like after she's got this shape, like she wouldn't put the cone in it. She would take it and, you know, wet felt it. Just a lot of stabbing, shaping. They're very triangular. They don't have any, you know, they're very solid triangle. They don't have um, like dips or puffs or, so that's the shape you wanna go for. And then, like I said, sometimes I just, I actually just, felt it on because you can really, you know, if you don't felt it on, it looks a little bit like it's just kind of perched there. Mm. Um, whereas if you felt it on, it looks a little bit more like, um, you know, like a hat really would fit. Um, in your locks and maybe even in what we cut off from his beard, I can find some eyebrows. So I'm just going to tease them out and make them fluffy. A shorter lock might be better, but since these are already cut, you know, old man no my brows are kind of crazy, so it's okay if they're pushing. Yeah, but sometimes a tighter lock is a little easier to control the look you want. Actually, put a little bit of core wool in there. To make sure I'm locking it down here. That's better. Um, the pants, you have a couple of options. Sometimes I just take a strip and, you know, instead of keeping it flat and smooth, you can actually let it kind of twist up and that makes these little baggy knees. That's probably the easiest way to do it. And then accentuate the folds by stabbing into them. The other possibility is to make a taco and actually, you know, try to, um, but this I feel like is faster and looks good. Gets the job done. Yeah. So you just kind of create the look of folds by stabbing into the creases. And then we'll come at the back of the legs a little bit. And would you add another one to thicken up his thigh if you wanted or? I like his legs like that. Um, but yeah, you could do whatever. I'm just looking at your other guy. Yeah, a yeah. yeah, he's a little different. They always turn out different. Um, okay, so uh, the belt, your kit comes with a strip of leather. And it has a natural little curve to it, so I'm gonna use that, come around here and you can give it a little tug that'll give them a little you know make it look kind of realistic and I use um, super glue I'll show you what I like 
Okay, I like this um, gel control super glue. It, you can just keep using it and keep using it until it's gone. It doesn't, it's a good, uh, good container that they figured out. So just gonna give it a little tug and put the glue on one side. Try my best to keep my fingers out of it. And just hold it there for a second. If someone wanted to get super fancy, they could probably use a little gnome needle and a little awl and, and stitch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. So he has a, um, a little pouch. It's just a piece of deer skin sewn back on itself. So if you're doing that, put it on your belt before you put your before you put your belt on. And then he also has a feather in his hat. You could um, put a leather strip around the hat. Just, I mean, oh my gosh, there's so many possibilities, especially with the pre-felt and the clothing colors. And um, did you hand stitch that little tool pouch? Um, I did on the sewing machine. Oh, yeah. There we go. Milo! Yes? I didn't know where you were. Well, you're, you're, you got it rolling maybe a little better than me. Rolling? Uh, well, the jokes. Oh, know. yeah, yeah. I have personally found my gnome jokes were just a little short of being funny. No doubt about it. <laughs> I'd like to think one of my jokes maybe tripped someone up. Yeah, trick Maybe. someone up. Yeah. We know him so much more now. Well, the people out than there. Than we did, what, a, however many hours ago. That there is no doubt about it. <laughs> um, okay, so what do we need to say? That was fun. This is the guy that we made. He looks good. Yeah, it's a really fun project. So I hope you guys had fun. And you can find us on Facebook um, at Serafina Fiber Art. And our group is called Serafina Felting Fanfare, and it is an awesome group to be a part of because uh, we just support each other, we share techniques, fanfare members get um, the scoop first on coupons and upcoming things, and uh, so it's a cool, supportive place it, to it, share your work. It is. It's you know what they say. There's uh, no place like home, and that's kind of it. <laughs> Yes. On fanfare, no man is an island. <laughs> or woman. Y yes. Yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> and um, yeah, we have a lot more coming up. So we hope you'll check out our website and you can find all of our tutorials at uh, the website under the tutorials page. There's also a section called Felton University. So after you've tackled something like this, you might be ready for a bigger project. Um, a more elaborate project. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. Bye.